Okay, folks, I am going to follow the advice of one of our members who suggested that I cut this video because it's an hour and 30 minutes or something crazy like that. And I usually don't make videos like that. So um, I'm going to cut it in two. So you'll see part one and part two. So All right, I so I have a list here uh, from a document that helps us with uh, how to find an accessible apartment and gives us uh, pointers on what to look for. So it's, it's a, a useful list to kind of follow. So we're gonna dive into this. Uh, and the first one is prepare your list of must have accessible features of that apartment, of that building, okay? So it just depends if it's just a house if it's just a small apartment that's that's uh, just its own building, or if you're looking at a large building, uh, you know the the must-haves. So external accommodations, so being able to get in uh, if it needs a ramp, uh, parking space, uh, handrails, enhancing light lighting, etc. Okay, so externals. Common area access, so widen entryways. The entryways for outside should be 34 inches for a wheelchair to uh, be able to enter. Here in my building, I'm lucky because it's 42 inches. No matter what door it is, it's, they're 42 inches, so I don't have to worry about how wide my wheelchair is. So I have a power wheelchair, by the way. So widen entryways and hallways, automatic doors, ADA compliant elevators. Now, I'm gonna say something here about elevators. <laughs> uh, ADA compliant elevators uh, sometimes work, sometimes don't, because if please don't allow yourself to end up on the 14th floor of, of a building, <laughs> because if there's a storm, if the electricity goes out, if, you, if there's a fire and you need to evacuate, you, my friend, are stuck on the 14th floor because you cannot use that elevator. So this is what I recommend. If you're looking at a very tall building, um, then, you know, with 14, 17, 20 floors, uh, that you see if there's an apartment available on first floor, second floor, that's it. Don't go beyond the second floor <laughs> because <laughs> these elevators break down eventually at some point and especially because you don't know how well they take care of their elevator. So I'm always fearful of being in a building and having to use an elevator because X, Y, Z could happen. So. And again, I already mentioned that list of things that could happen. So make sure that if you're looking at tall buildings, stay on the first or second floor maximum uh, because of those concerns. Uh, floor plan accommodations. So wider door jams, as I was talking about, hallways, flat or low rise thresholds, roll in sinks and showers. So, um, the weird thing about this building is that the guest bathrooms have a roll-in sink and our bedrooms don't have one. <laughs> so it's like, what, what did we do that for? <laughs> so our, our sinks, none of them are roll-in, <laughs> only the guest bathrooms. So it's just wild. <laughs> I don't know why, but... <laughs> But if you need a roll-in sink, please mention that. Control adjustments. Location of electrical switch uh, switches, where are they? Can you reach them? And outlets to be within reach. So, you know, if you want to stretch out your arms um, and make sure that they are all within reach. So you want to, you know, you, know, you don't want to have to raise your arms. But if you can, if you can, Put your hands out and make sure that these switches, um, outlets are at reach. Uh, level style door handles 
and braille or tactile panels near controls if, if you have a vision uh, issue and if you do braille. Uh, pools, amenities, pools, fitness centers, lounge areas, make sure those are accessible as well. Make sure that, and, and you're gonna have to go there to take a look at it yourself. I wouldn't trust any report from anybody else. Just go there yourself and take a look at them. Number two, search online for handicap accessible apartments. And unfortunately, as we all know, or most of us know, there's a waiting list for accessible apartments. It, they're very uh, few in between. So uh, you might have to go to a regular apartment and see if that landlord is willing to uh, make it accessible for you. So accessible apartments, you'll have to get on a list. And it could be a year, it could be three years of wait uh, for you to be able to get into an accessible apartments. So it's very unfortunate. Uh, some accessible apartments might be just really out of the way and, and just not convenient. Narrow search results with filters. So here, you know, you want to filter screens look different depending on the site you're on. But once you've got the basics in place, look for ways to filter your results. You can start with terms like disability access, then get more specific. So that's hard. It really is hard looking for apartments that are accessible. Uh, I usually talk to the owner or to the manager directly. Uh, if I see an apartment I'm interested in, I'll call rather than doing all these crazy searches. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, because it's hard to find them. Uh, use listing page options to focus your search. So it's, you know, each of these can, you know, so it's, it's hard to find them on the Internet. So if you see an apartment that you would like to live in, you know, call and see what's, what's available, what's possible. Read the property's description, which is very important. Look at photos. See if there are photos available, videos, or virtual tours. That would be very helpful, but not all of them have it, especially if it's an individual uh, apartment. So ramps. An accessible walkway is with handrails, adequate lighting for both indoor and outdoor spaces, low rise flooring, which I have no idea what that is, <laughs> with low thresholds to minimize obstacles or tripping hazards, hazards uh, grab bars and bathrooms, and the type of bathroom it is too. You know, some people don't care if it's a tub. Um, I do care because <laughs> I can't use tubs. So. <laughs> Tabs are out for me, but for you, it might be different. In grab bars, in a tub, forget it. <laughs> Doors and hallways wide enough to allow easy access for a wheelchair. So <clears throat> not every apartment community offers a virtual tour or a video tour as depicted below. So, so that's, that's important for you to know that not everybody has a video on their apartment. Examine the floor plan, which might help you in some ways to see how it's designed. An open floor plan would be awesome for me, but it might not be for you. So entryways and hallways wide enough to accommodate wheelchair access, kitchen modifications like a roll-in sink and counter Countertops with space underneath, lowered cabinets, appliances with front controls, which would be awesome. Uh, bathroom modifications like grab bars, roll-in showers and sinks, shower bench, single control faucets. Expect more accessibility options for newer buildings, which is really important. Some buildings, some newer buildings have been, uh, it's kind of eclectic. They've, they've built it with accessibility, but also they've built it enough 
uh, well enough that a regular person can use it. So it's really cool. Uh, so you can kind of look at those buildings as well if they are available for you. A range of visit in person or a via video and ask questions. Ask a lot of questions. Any questions? <laughs> Any. <laughs> so make a list of questions that you would have of things that would be, you know, uh, ask questions about, you know, water services. Does, does the utilities, are they included? Ask um, how long does a repair takes take? Um, ask about uh, privacy. You know, what do they follow? Uh, ask about noise. You know, how noisy is the building? Uh, because that could be irritating too if the walls are pretty thin. <laughs> I've had that, um, so you know, make your make your list. Ask the leasing agent about accessibility and or modifications. So ask them about reasonable um, modifications. What they understand about that, they have to follow the ADA. But you know, what is reasonable? What types of accessible apartments are available? Are there renovations planned that would make the building more or less accessible? More or less. But to me, it has to be more, <laughs> not less. What year was the apartment community built? So this is really important because sometimes the modifications can't be done because the building is too old. And so then you're stuck. You know, you, you desperately need a modification that can't be done because the building is too old. And if they try to do it, it it's just gonna really cause a big issue. So you want a newer building for that reason. Um, are animals allowed? This is applicable if you have a service animal. And in some, a lot of apartments now are allowing just pets uh, with a certain size. Um, and, uh, but if you have a service dog, then it has to be, by regulation, has to be allowed. Who handles maintenance? And this is a really important question. Who handles maintenance and how quickly can you expect to be done? So what is the time frame? And it depends on the repair, but will they be able to give you a timeline for that repair? Will maintenance personnel place a priority on modifications or repairs designed to assist with my disability. And that could be, you know, changing the faucets uh, to just a one faucet. Uh, could it be um, changing the, the knobs for, you know, hand, hand uh, the hand model? Uh, could it be, you know, anything? Removing the carpet, I don't know. So, uh, because you're concerned about how your wheelchair <laughs> might ruin the carpet, which is very possible. Do you know about my right to make reasonable modifications in my space? So that is a, a question that the landlord might stumble over, uh, but um, then you can talk about uh, what modifications were you looking for, you know? And the first thing I would say, can we put some corner protectors on, on the walls so that I don't end up, you know, chipping the corners or scratching the corners. And, you know, it could be a visible, it could be a visible type of material. And in the doors, if they could put some, uh, a plate on the door so that I don't run into it. It could be, you know, temporary, a plastic type, transparent. So those were things that I would put on there. Not that I crash all the time, I don't. But Sometimes I'm ill and, and I m miss my mark. <laughs> so, so my modifications aren't big. I would need modifications for the sinks. I would need modifications for the shower. Um, hopefully I can get into depending on the shower. And I know that the landlord owns a building. In a lot of states, they can get a modification to their bathrooms for free. And it just depends on companies that are around. If I need to make modifications, do you require an additional deposit 
or to cover the cost of returning my unit to its original condition when I move out. I'm not sure they can do that. I'm not sure they can <coughs> charge you more than a regular person, so that would be questionable. Would you have to move those? Would you have to, you know, pay for bringing the apartment back to its original uh, state? I don't know. What is the best way to communicate with you? Is it by email? Is it by text? Is it by calling? That, my friend, is really important because some landlords are very busy, some managers are very busy, and um, sometimes they communicate really well by email. And so um, always require that if they're coming into your apartment to give you at least 24-hour notice, uh, they just can't walk in, okay? Unless you're there, you know they're coming, you're okay with it, but otherwise, 24 hours. They just can't wander in. <laughs> Check the apartment community's amenities and common areas. So the common areas, if it's, you know, a larger building, you want to check and make sure that if you're going to use those, that they are adaptable for you. Do you enter the building through automated doors? Are there any wheelchair ramps? And if so, where are they located? Is it the back? Is it the front? Is it the side? You know, it's important to know. Does the building have at least one accessible elevator wide enough to accommodate a wheelchair? Again, don't go too high in these buildings. <coughs> Is there an accessible laundry? Now, laundry can be a little tricky because um, in the apartments, sometimes they have a, a place for you to bring your own washer and dryer. Sometimes they have washer and dryer there in the apartment, uh, but they're top loaders. So uh, how are you going to handle those is a question. Uh, can they be changed for front loaders? You know, all that conversation has to happen. If they have a laundry area, you know, do you want that, you know, for your service? Um, uh, my strong advice is that obviously uh, you probably want your laundry done in your own apartment uh, for comfortability. Um, and not have to deal with uh, a public laundry space. You see, laundry. So laundry is a big question for me. Uh, how wide are entryways and hallways? What is the lighting like in both the indoor and outdoor common spaces? Are, you know, and that that comes with safety. It, it, can, it can come into play, you know, for someone who has visual problems. Are these specially designated handicapped parking space? Are there special designated handicapped parking spaces? <laughs> so this is another important question. Um, you might be on the public system, taking the bus and, and vans, and you might not have a car at all. But I would say if friends are coming or whatever, you want to have a handicap tag uh, available for them so they can park near your spot. So, and you might want to put a cone there or something so that people know that somebody's using that space. View the apartment with an eye for disability friendly features for you, you know, uh, an apartment with disability friendly, they might have had an apartment already adapted for a blind person, but that doesn't work for a wheelchair person or for the deaf. Doesn't work for you, you know? So you really have to say this is for a wheelchair person. Landlords, sometimes it just kind of goes over their head in terms of disability or disabled. Um, what is disability? And they have to be prepared to know the different categories of disabilities. So, you know, 
Some more questions here. Yeah, so you want to view it with an eye for wheelchair use. So do you open the apartment doors with lever handles? And that's what I meant earlier. So do you open the apartment doors with lever handles or round, round knobs? Is flooring level, smooth, and easy enough to walk or roll across? Are the apartment doors at the least 32 inches wide? And that's for inside. Are there rocker style light switches, uh, digital thermostat, electric outlets, or other household controls uh, placed within reach of the wheelchair height? So you want to measure it wheelchair height. So can you easily reach sinks and faucets? Big question. Are the faucets controls easy to manipulate? You know, are they handle or are they knob? Are the bathtub and shower big enough to be accessible to anyone? Do the tub, shower, and toilets have grab bars? If not, discuss installation options. Uh, and, and, and this is a problem with older buildings. So in a newer building, it might be already there. But in a newer building, it won't be a problem to install those. So if the apartment is furnished, are the furnishing, furnishings suitable for you? Is lighting sufficient to see clearly in the interior locations? You might need the light bulbs changed. So, are smoke detectors accessible? This is so important <laughs> because if they're not, if they're up in the ceiling, somebody's going to have to come in and change those batteries every so often, every six months, I think it is. So, if they want to lower them, that would be awesome. You have accessibility to that. And then you can change them on your own. Tour the neighborhood to look for local am amenities. So, you know, are there stores nearby? Is there a mall nearby? Uh, is there, you know, gas stations, hotels? Other things that you might use or might need at some point especially to pick up food or pick up some fun stuff that you want to eat. You know, little restaurants, little sodas, little bar places. A location offers easy walking or other access. Sidewalks that are wide, well lit, clean, ramped curves, Adequate lighting, crossing signals, intersections. Is it a safe place for you to get out of the apartment? Are there bus stops or other public transportation access for commuting to work or recreation? Are grocery stores, pharmacies, restaurants, and other food delivery options nearby? Are there? Because you don't want to put yourself in a place that you have to isolate because there is nothing around you. Prepare to apply for a handicap accessible apartment. So you have to have all kinds of stuff ready. <laughs> so you have to have contact information, driver's license, ID, social security number, vehicle documentation if you have a car, current and previous employment records, if any, um, current and previous rental information, because they will check on your previous rental experiences. If you've wrecked the building and you've engaged in crazy behavior, they have the right to turn you down, so be careful. Personal references and emergency contact information. So friends of yours who can say, you know, oh no, she's very responsible, she's very quiet, she's very good in communicating, so you want that available. 
Cost is prominent aspect of finding a livable apartment. Yes, it is. Leasing agents and renters alike um, consider finances to be one of the most important elements. Make sure you can provide pay stubs, tax renter, uh, returns, records of any housing or disability benefits, any other documentation of your income. They want to know, do you, do you have money? <laughs> How are you going to pay? How are you going to pay? Know your rights before signing a contract. So uh, I have a list for that. So that will be the second part. Uh, refuse to negotiate with you. You know, these are the negatives, you know, that if you find any difficulty in the beginning, it's going to be difficult for when you move in. So that's just a given. So on the basis of your ability status, a leasing agent or property manager cannot do any of the following. So these are your rights in a short list. <laughs> refuse to negotiate with you, refuse to rent to you an apartment, tell you an available unit is not available. <laughs> set very different terms for you than other tenants, charge you more for an accessible apartment than a non-accessible one. I don't think so, buddy old pal. Doesn't work that way. So you need to make sure this does not happen to you. Doesn't matter how, how desperate you are. Discrimination in housing. The Fair Housing Act prohibits discrimination in housing policy and practice. The FHA also stipulates design and construction recommendations for newly built handicap accessible apartments. Under the accessibility requirements of the FHA, depart apartment facilities with more than four units built after 1991, which is when the ADA came into, uh, into works, must offer accessible routes into and around housing units. They also must provide accessible parking spots, public areas, and well as kitchen, bathroom design that are usable by people with disabilities. Accessible spaces, reasonable accommodations. And you know, there's a lot of questions about reasonable. What is reasonable? The reasonable accommodation section, and there is one, it's the Act of 1973, Section 504, says that in federal assisted uh, accessible housing accessibility modifications are made and paid for by the landlord unless they cause undue financial hardship. Now, I don't think changing a faucet is going to be undue uh, financial hardship. I don't think that putting uh, corner protectors is going to be an undue financial hardship. That's baloney. Um, I don't think that putting a plate on the doors, on the lower part of the doors, is undue financial hardship. So we got to look at what's reasonable and what's ridiculous. In other housing besides that, which is federally funded, tenants have the right to request accessibility modifications, but usually pay the cost themselves. So the landlord's going to request that um, a professional come in and, and install it. They won't let you install it. They'll, they'll bring in a, someone who's professional and installs it in correctly. Choose your new place and move in. <laughs> so be safe, comfortable, and accessible apartment. Do Apartments do exist. They do exist. But there's, there's waiting lists. So that's what this document doesn't know. 
more are being built each year, which is true. There's a, there's a few more. But I had a friend on YouTube who waited three years. He lived in a bus. <laughs> there are people with disabilities in wheelchairs who live in RVs and buses because they're not enough accessible apartments. There are resources available that you can help you move into an apartment with the modifications you need and want. More resources for finding handicap accessible apartments are all over the place. So, you know, you can you can go to um, apartments.com and uh, contact somebody there so they can assist you in finding uh, a reasonably accessible apartment. Federal benefits programs for accessible housing. So, you know, some of these uh, modifications that the, that the landlord wants to make, sometimes there's funds out there to cover that. So, such as um, a ramp, such as modifying. Sometimes you can find uh, companies that will do it for free. If you own the building, you're the owner, you can ask for XYZ company to come in and, and make an accessible bathroom for them, and they'll charge either half or nothing. So the, the landlords have resources out there, so they can't say, oh, that's, that's just too much. No. There's resources out there for them, so they shouldn't whine and complain, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so... There is help for landlords, so <laughs> they just have to poke around and, and find them. So that is the first part, folks, how to find an accessible apartment. Um, I'm going to stop it here and uh, bring in the second part. So these are your rights in a short list. <laughs> refuse to negotiate with you, refuse to rent to you an apartment, tell you an available unit, is not available. <laughs> Set very different terms for you than other tenants. Charge you more for an accessible apartment than a non-accessible one. I don't think so, buddy old pal. Doesn't work that way. So you need to make sure this does not happen to you. Doesn't matter how, how desperate you are. Discrimination in housing. The Fair Housing Act prohibits discrimination in housing policy and practice. The FHA also stipulates design and construction recommendations for newly built handicap accessible apartments. Under the accessibility requirements of the FHA, depart apartment facilities with more than four units built after 1991, which is when the ADA came into, uh, into works, must offer accessible routes into and around housing units. They also must provide accessible parking spots, public areas, and well as kitchen, bathroom design that are usable by people with disabilities. Accessible spaces, reasonable accommodations. And you know, there's a lot of questions about reasonable. What is reasonable? The reasonable accommodation section, and there is one, it's the Act of 1973, Section 504, says that in federal assisted uh, accessible housing accessibility modifications are made and paid for by the landlord unless they cause undue financial hardship. Now, I don't think changing a faucet is going to be undue uh, financial hardship. I don't think that putting uh, corner protectors is going to be an undue financial hardship. That's baloney. Um, I don't think that putting a plate on the doors, on the lower part of the doors, 
is undue financial hardship. So we got to look at what's reasonable and what's ridiculous. In other housing besides that, which is federally funded, tenants have the right to request accessibility modifications, but usually pay the cost themselves. So the landlord's going to request that um, a professional come in and, and install it. They won't let you install it. They'll, they'll bring in a, someone who's professional and installs it in correctly. Choose your new place and move in. <laughs> so be safe, comfortable, and accessible apartment. Do apartments do exist? They do exist, but there's there's waiting lists. So that's what this document doesn't know. <laughs> more are being built each year, which is true. There's a there's a few more. But I had a friend on YouTube who waited three years. He lived in a bus. <laughs> there are people with disabilities in wheelchairs who live in RVs and buses because they're not enough accessible apartments. There are resources available that you can help you move into an apartment with the modifications you need and want. More resources for finding handicap accessible apartments are all over the place. So, you know, you can you can go to um, apartments.com and uh, contact somebody there so they can assist you in finding uh, a reasonably accessible apartment. Federal benefits programs for accessible housing. So, you know, some of these uh, modifications that the, that the landlord wants to make, sometimes there's funds out there to cover that, so such as um, a ramp, such as modifying. Sometimes you can find uh, companies that will do it for free. If you own the building, you're the owner, you can ask for XYZ company to come in and, and make an accessible bathroom for them, and they'll charge either half or nothing. So. The, the landlords have resources out there, so they can't say, oh, that's, that's just too much. No. There's resources out there for them, so they shouldn't whine and complain, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so there is help for landlords, so <laughs> they just have to poke around and, and find out. So that is the first part, folks, how to find an accessible apartment. Um, I'm going to stop it here and uh, bring in the second part.